Hi, and welcome to the History Center. My name is CJ Shank. I am a Visitor Experience Associate. I'm here at the first floor of the Transportation Gallery at the Agricultural and Industrial Museum. We're going to do a quick walkthrough of some of our coolest items here. Behind me is a York engine built in 1831 by Phineas Davis and master machinist William Wood. This was entered into a design contest with the B&O Railroad. It won um, top of the five or so competitors in the competition. Because there was no rail line connecting York and Baltimore, it had to be transported there by oxen, which gave it a little bit of an edge since not so many other uh, designs could get there. However, it far exceeded the qualifications of the competition, so prize winning. Over here, we have our diesel splinter. This one was built in 1942. Above us is our Aeronautica Model K plane. It was not manufactured here in York, but we have a cool story connecting it. In 1937, Oscar Hostetter and his wife flew cross country from here to Washington State to introduce their six month old daughter to family members. They had to stop several times along the route, not so much to refuel the plane as to refuel the baby for feedings. Now, you may, well, you probably can't see from where you are. The cabin is pretty small. And of course, we all know there were no car seats at the time. The baby was carried in the storage uh, compartment, in the, towards the back of the passenger compartment, in something kind of modified to be like a crib. Not necessarily the safest way, but you do what you can with what you got. Speaking of which, here we have the J.G. Brill Trolley, built in 1916 by the Brill Company, most likely in Philadelphia. It was purchased by the York Rail Company. At the time, there was a line of trolleys all the way through the city. They were mainly retired around 1938. The vast majority were destroyed. However, this one was preserved more or less by accident. And around in the 1950s, it was purchased by a grocery store owner who wanted to build an extension to his shop. However, he couldn't get a building permit, so he cleaned out the interior, adapted it, and made this into his grocery store extension, just sort of parking it out front. Once again, that York motto, you do what you can with what you got and you recycle. The interior is no longer exactly accurate to what a trolley in use would have looked like, but you can still see the light fixtures up ahead, and to a certain extent you can see the bells on the side to ring for your stops. Moving backwards further in time, we have our collection of carriages. Here is our standing top Surrey. Over there are Buckford, both built around 1895. The standing top Surrey, I like to compare this to our minivan. We have room in the back for luggage and children. You may look at it and say, oh yeah, two in the front, two in the back. However, you see on the side there are some platforms there. You could have extra people or luggage strapped on or standing and balancing. The shock absorbers here gave you somewhat of a smoother ride, but because of the unpaved roads, you had a lot of bouncing and jogging around, especially with the buckboard. The buckboard, I like to compare to our station wagon. It's got room in the back for luggage, and also people, if you don't mind a little bit of a bumpy ride. You could have a bench back there, or you could just sit towards the back. Um, in between is our cutter sleigh. Now our cutter sleigh was built in 1900. Notice on the wheels on our carriages, there's not a lot of traction. It would be very easy for them to get kind of frozen in place in the snow or to kind of spin out the way that you do if you get stuck in a snowbank. 
However, this wasn't really a practical transportation, more of a for fun. So, you know, if you know the song Jingle Bells, everybody does. This is a one horse open sleigh. Less for I'm going out to run errands, more for I'm going out for a nice evening with my significant other. We're going to cuddle together under a blanket and uh, enjoy the cold weather the best that we can. And those sleigh uh, parts would glide more smoothly over the snow than wheels would. As we move to our final object, just take a quick note of the size of this horse here. So, I was standing high beside it, and you can see my head and his head, I'm a little shorter than he is, but he's still, you know, about comparable. We're going to come over here to our Conestoga wagon. The Conestoga wagon was built in 1812. A lot of people see this, and the first question they ask is, oh, like the Oregon Trail, or oh, like Little House on the Prairie. Not quite. Those wagons would have been more like an RV, you know, room for the family and for lovers. These, however, are a lot more like the 18-wheeler or big rig of the 1800s. These were built with a sloped base to carry merchandise to harder to reach rural areas. The sloped base made sure that the luggage, whatever it was, boxes, sacks, barrels, would slide down to the middle of the um, wagon, keeping that center of gravity nice and consistent. The um, wheels are much bigger and wider, and it's made out of heavy iron and thick, heavy wood. It would have been pulled now by a team of horses, six to eight of them. This is the size horseshoe that that horse we saw pulling the buckboard would have been. This is the size of the horseshoe that a Conestoga driver horse would have worn. Much, much larger. My head would approximately come up maybe to their shoulder. I may have even been a little shorter than their shoulder. And a team of six to eight of them. So you can imagine how heavy this was and how much weight it had when it was fully loaded with uh, merchandise. The driver of the Conestoga wagon, he would not have ridden in the wagon itself. You know, that sloped face would have made it really hard to balance, and that would have added extra unnecessary weight. Instead, he would have ridden on the left wheel horse. So the left, the horse on the left side of the team, closest to the wheel, where he would have had quick access to the brake and an easier time steering and guiding the horses. Some people theorize, and this is only a theory, although there is good evidence to support it, but this is why in America, we ride, or the driver rides on the left side of the car, and we drive on the right side of the road. And can't say for sure if it's true or not, but it is a plausible theory. These were more or less made obsolete by the train system. So by the mid 1850s, pretty much a dying uh, industry. But this is a rare example of one. Most likely built in Conestoga, Pennsylvania. Oh, right here in York. I apologize. Most likely this built right here in York. This one. Most of them built in Conestoga, Pennsylvania. We don't know who the manufacturer was, but we do know where it was. So, if we have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And in the meantime, maybe we can get a good look at the edges of the wagon. If there are no questions, I'll wrap it up here, but I will share one fun fact, since we didn't have any questions. If you've heard the phrase, I'll be there with bells on, 
that is related to the Conestoga wagon, and by extension, York, Pennsylvania. The horses would have worn bells on their harnesses, most likely to signal to the town that new merchandise was coming in, and it was a good time to go out if you needed to buy something from the farther out towns. So, and with that, I guess we'll wrap it up. Thank you for tuning in, and see you next week.